All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, we're working on solving systems of equations, and specifically we're talking about solving systems of two equations. And quite, and we're talking about that these are linear equations or linear functions, that our graph is going to be a line. And the solution to two equations, two linear function equations, is the point of intersection where those graphs, in fact, do intersect each other. Now, if we're looking at those graphs on a coordinate plane, that point of intersection is going to give us an ordered pair. And if we take that ordered pair and we plug it into the values of x and y, uh, then we're going to come up with the same solution. Uh, in other words, they are going to equal each other at that point at using uh, that particular ordered pair if it in fact has one solution. And that's going to bring us to a little bit of vocabulary here. Uh, we have what we are call, that we call consistent equations. Now this is where there is at least one solution. Now for that to be true, at least one solution, two things are going to exist. Either one of two things are going to exist. We have linear equations with different slopes and if they have different slopes they are going to intersect and uh, that would be the mean that we have one solution for that system of equations. If, in fact, the as we reduce that those these equations to their simplest form, if they give us the same equation, then that's going to represent the same line, and they have infinite numbers of solutions. In other words, they equal each other. Then there's what we have, what we call inconsistent. And inconsistent is going to be no solution. And how we can recognize that even before we graph it is if the two lines have the same slope. Now, two more vocabulary terms are independent. So we can have, first we got either consistent or inconsistent. Consistent meaning there's at least one solution. And if there is exactly one solution, this would be where we've got two lines with different slopes, we call that consistent and independent. And if there are infinite number of solutions, in other words, the lines are exactly the same, the equations of the line, I should say, are exactly the same, then that is consistent and dependent. Now, we see here the chart below, and we have examples here. Uh, that first one on the left is consistent and independent. We see two lines. They have one point of intersection, uh, meaning that there is one solution. Uh, the, uh, in the chart in the middle, we see a consistent and dependent in other words, they come down, they are in fact the same line, and so there's infinitely many solutions. No matter what ordered pair we would have put into either of those two equations, uh, they are going to always equal each other. And then the third example is two parallel lines. We would call those inconsistent. There is no solution to the system of equations. So let's go. We're going to jump over here and we're going to look at a couple of uh, systems of equations and classifying them either as consistent independent, consistent dependent, or inconsistent. All right, so here we have the equations of two lines. Uh, 6x minus 4y equals 15, uh, and then our second equation is negative 6x plus 4y equals 18. And we're trying to determine whether these are consistent or inconsistent. And if they are consistent, whether they are independent or dependent, classifying them properly. And so the first thing that we need to do is take each equation and we need to put it in uh, slope intercept form uh, and get it reduced to its simplest form. So let's take this first equation. We've got 6x minus 4y equals 15. And I want to get it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. And once I do, I'm going to end up with negative 4y equals negative 6x plus 15. And then to get to isolate the y and get it by itself, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 4. And once I do, I'm going to have y equals 
And let's see, negative 6 divided by negative 4 is going to give me 6 over 4. And I can reduce, both of those are divisible by 2, so I can reduce that to 3 over 2, or 3 halves x. Uh, then, let's see, 15 divided by negative 4, then is going to give me negative 15 fourths. Okay, that's putting the first equation into slope-intercept form. Now let's tackle the second equation, where we've got negative 6x plus 4y equals 18. And again, this time I'm going to add 6 to both sides, and then so then I'm going to have 4y equals 6x plus 18. And let's see, now we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. Well, let's see, 6 over 4x, that's, I can reduce that down to, again, 3 over 2x. And let's see, 18 over 4. 18 over 4, again, those both are divisible by 2. If I divide 18 by 2, I'm going to get 9. And if I divide 4 by 2, I'm going to get 2. Let me put a little plus sign in here. Okay, so that's taking both of those equations, putting them in slope-intercept form. Now, here's what I expect to see when I graph these, and we're going to graph these in just a moment. The slope of both of these lines is 3 halves, 3 over 2. And that being the case, since the slope of these two linear functions are the same, then I'm expecting to get parallel lines. Let's see if that's true. Okay, so we've jumped over here to the calculator, and I've gone ahead for the S to save us a little time. I went ahead and entered the two equations that we uh, just put into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, in its simplest form. And if you remember from the two equations, one of those uh, was going to be uh, negative uh, 3 halves x minus 15 over 4, uh, and the second one there was going to then to be uh, 3 halves x plus 9 over 2. Now, if you remember, I said I'm expecting to see parallel lines because my slope is the same. So I've entered the equations. So let's hit the graph button, see what we got. And shazam, in fact, I've got two parallel lines, and we would call those inconsistent. So these are two inconsistent equations. There are no solutions. There is no point of intersection of these two linear functions. Okay, well, let's quickly look at a second example here. Now I've got two linear functions, linear equations. Uh, the first one being negative 4x plus 5y equals negative 17. And the second equation, second linear function is negative 4x minus 2y equals 15. So once again, I'm going to put these in slope-intercept form in the simplest form that I can get it to, uh, which is, and of course, slope-intercept form is y equal mx plus b. And so let's, uh, we're going to hit this first equation. So I've got negative 4x plus 5y equals negative 17. And we're going to add 4x to both sides. It's going to give me 5y equals 4x minus 17. And we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 5, and that's going to leave me with y equals 4 fifths x minus 17 over 5. So there I've put the first equation into slope-intercept form. Let's hit the second one. Starts off the same way. I got negative 4x, but now I've got negative 2y minus 2y equals 15 going to add 4x to both sides. That's going to leave me with negative 2y equals 4x plus 15. We're going to divide both sides of this equation by negative 2. And so 4 divided by negative 2 is going to leave me with negative 2x. And 15 divided by negative 2 is going to leave me with negative, because I'm dividing a positive by negative, 15 over 2. So we've reduced both of these equations, put them in slope-intercept form, 
And what am I going to expect to see when I when I graph these? Well, I have two different slopes. On this first equation over here, I've got a slope of negative four fifths, and here in this second equation, I've got a I mean, excuse me, positive four fifths, and in this second equation, I've got a slope of negative two. Now I suspect I'm going to see these lines, see a, a point of intersection between the two lines, and once I do, that means I've got one solution to the system of equations. And if I'm classifying these systems, they are consistent and independent. Let's jump to the calculator. Okay, we're over here to the calculator. Previously, uh, in the previous slide, we had taken two equations. We put them in slope intercept form and reduced them to their simplest term. And we had the first equation was 4 fifths x minus 17 over 5 and the second equation was minus 2x minus or negative 2x minus 15 over 2 and we stated or I stated that I'm expecting when these graphs when these two are graphed that we should see some point of intersection uh, that as we classify these we would say that they are consistent and independent well let's see what happens when we graph them I've already entered the equations as you can obviously see There comes equation one, boom, there comes equation two, and we see that we've got a point of intersection um, down here, what it looks like to be, if I'm guessing, that x is going to be equal to somewhere around negative one and a half or three halves, and y would be equal to one two three four probably about negative four and a half or negative four something between negative four and number negative five all right well there we go we've done it we've classified them we've graphed them uh, but now we're going to start to move over here and actually solve these algebraically which is a lot more fun <laughs>